and welcome to the Applications Lab here at Phenomenix. I'm Danielle Moore, a Field application Scientist at Phenologix, the Applications Group within Phenomenix. One of the topics customers ask me about frequently is why tuning analytes on your mass spec in-house matters. Today I'm going to walk you through the process from compound infusion through saving your data and everything in between. So let's get started! Okay, so a very brief overview of the inside of a mass spec. We have the sample introduction. Right behind the curtain plate we have the cone voltage or declustering potential. And that is applied to the analyte and it is analyte specific. Your analyte then travels into Q1 where we identify the precursor ion. The precursor ion then travels into Q2 or the collision cell where it's bombarded by neutral ions and fragments. Those fragments then travel into Q3 where we identify the product ions and send them on to the de detector. So for today's tutorial, I want to look at an easily ionized compound. We're going to look at the structure, monoisotopic mass, ionization, functional groups, uh, the pH dependent microspecies, and the fragments. So here we have a structure with a monoisotopic mass of 336.22 Daltons. And we have an amine functional group and an amide functional group. Now, if you remember from your chemistry days, nitrogen has an electron cloud and can be either a donator or an acceptor. The amide group is more electronegative with oxygen pulling the electron cloud from nitrogen toward itself creating partial resonance. Whereas the amine group is left with its electron cloud intact and is more readily protonated. Because it's more readily protonated we know that we're going to be using ESI positive mode in our mass spec and that we're going to be looking for an M plus H mass of 337.22 Daltons. Let's take a look at the microspecies versus pH chart. Uh, here on the y-axis you see the percent microspecies and along the x-axis we see the pH. Here we have a charged microspecies and it, we're going to see 100% of this charged microspecies at a pH anything less than 7, while anything above about 10, we're going to see 100% of a neutral microspecies. Because we want to look for a charged microspecies, this tells me that I want to use an acidic buffer, and I am going to choose 0.1% formic acid in a 50-50 aqueous organic solution. And because I am tuning on a Cyx 4500 mass spec, I'm going to use a concentration of 100 nanograms per mil. Now, if you have a less sensitive mass spec, you might need to increase that concentration. While if you have a more sensitive mass spec, you can probably lower that concentration. Lastly, let's take a look at the anticipated fragmentation pattern of this structure. We're expecting fragmentation to occur around our nitrogens and we'll get a charged and a neutral fragment at each nitrogen. So we are expecting to see a 188 mass to charge ratio charged fragment and a 105 mass to charge ratio charged fragment. Okay, let's tune this analyte. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is disconnect your HPLC tubing from your mass spec. This is the tubing that's coming out of the column oven and I like to wind the tubing around itself so that I don't lose anything. Now on a 4500 you have an integrated syringe pump so you will take your syringe, you'll open your the door to the syringe pump, lower that bar, release the clasp, and place the syringe flush. Tighten it up and make sure nothing wiggles. Now connect the tubing into your mass spec. Okay, now to tune our analyte. Open Analyst Software, and we're going to create a new project first. So go to Tools, scroll down to Project, and select Create Project. Make sure the data path is what you want, and name your project. If you're going to tune a lot of analytes, maybe you want to create a folder called Tuning Folder. Once you've named it, click OK, and now we're going to configure the hardware. So go to Configure, double-click Hardware Configuration, select MS Only, and click Activate Profile. 
Once you have a green check, you can go ahead and close that box. Now go to Tune and Calibrate, and once you hit that, you'll see the T icon in the toolbar is compressed and you should hear your mass spec. Double click Manual Tuning, and we're going to start the syringe pump first in order to introduce the sample into the mass spec. If you have a manual syringe pump, you do want to make sure you press the Run button. Go to Scan Type, and from the drop-down menu, select Q1. Under Polarity, make sure you're in the proper polarity. And for this analyte, because I know the mass I'm looking for is 337, I'm going to choose a mass range of 100 Daltons, so from 300 to 400 Daltons. For cycles, I'm going to choose 500, and you'll see that the duration is directly affected by the cycles you put in. Now we'll click Start, and we will wait for our analyte to appear. Here you see we have our expected M plus H mass, and we look over in the, the bottom left box, and we're, now we're going to wait for the intensity to kind of level out. If your intensity is all over the place here, that can be problematic. You really do want to wait until it's leveled out. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and click Stop, and you see the intensity is pretty level there. So now I'm going to click MCA, which is Multiple Channel a Averaging and it averages the intensity of the scan cycles. I'm going to greatly reduce our cy cycles down to five, and you see the duration fell quite a lot. And now we're going to actually save this. So go click Acquire, and name your sample Q1 scan. For your data file name, name it the name of your compound. In the comments section, you can put what buffer you used, or you don't need to put anything at all. Click OK, and now we're actually saving the Q1 scan. Next, go to Scan Type, and from the drop-down menu, select Product Ion. Go to Product Of, and put in the Q1 mass. For our Start and Stop range, I'm going to put in a range from 40 to just over the mass of Q1, about 340. Change the cycles to 5. And then you see under the Compound tab, we have some options. Now we're going to be changing the collision energy. I'm going to start at a collision energy of 10 volts. Click Acquire. Name the sample Product Ion at CE, or Collision Energy, equals 10. Okay, so now we see our precursor ion there at the far right side of our range, but it's not really fragmenting at a collision energy of 10. So I wait until that stops, and now I'm gonna ramp it up to 20 volts. Click Acquire, and name accordingly. Okay, now we can see our precursor ion is beginning to fragment. And there is that anticipated fragment of 188 M to Z. So we're going to continually increase the collision energy by 10 volts until the precursor ion is completely gone. At 30, we're starting to see more fragments. And both of the anticipated fragments are there. So let's ramp it up to 40. Click Acquire, name accordingly. And now our precursor ion is almost completely gone. And look how abundant those two fragments are. Let's go ahead and go all the way to 50 volts. And see what happens. It doesn't look like our precursor ion is still there. Now we wouldn't want to keep going because once the precursor ion is gone, you might see what's called secondary fragmentation, and that's a, the fragment of a fragment. So right-click that bottom right box, open file, and now we can actually look at the fragments at different collision energies using the black arrows in the toolbar. Okay, so here we have it at 50, and it doesn't look like the precursor ion is still there. Well, I'm going to zoom in on the y-axis, and sure enough, it is actually still there, just barely. 
but that's how you can tell. Go ahead and close out of that box. It brings us back to our previous page layout. Now we're going to change the scan type to MRM. Go ahead and put in the Q1 mass, which should be 337.1 for each of your fragments. Put in the Q3, or the product ions found. Time is now in milliseconds, so I'm going to put in 200 and name the ID. Now I am only using these two fragments. Your analyte might fragment into several fragments. Use as many as you'd like. Okay, go to Edit Ramp and from the drop down menu select Collision Energy. We know that our analyte doesn't exist after about 50, so I'm going to stop it at 60 volts and I'm going to go two and a half volts at a time. Click OK. And let's acquire this. Call the sample MRMCE Opt because we're optimizing the collision energies for our transitions now. And you should get for your collision energies a nice bell like curve. Once that's finished, right click in that bottom right box to open the file, and now you can see the collision energy at, wi at which each of your transitions is most abundant. Right click in the table and add collision energy to the table. Next we're going to add the collision energies that we found for each of our transitions by right clicking in that bottom right box and selecting the appropriate transition. The default is good for the second transition so we'll just leave it. Now we're going to optimize the declustering potential, going about 5 volts at a time. Click Acquire, and we'll name this MRM DP Opt. Now the reason we optimize the declustering potential at this point, even though it is applied to the analyte before it enters the mass spec, is to eliminate the possibility of what we call isobaric interferences. The declustering potential for your transitions should match. So once it's about done, you can go ahead and right click in that bottom right box, open the file, and sure enough you see the traces for these transitions match. Uh, in this case, the declustering potential is going to be pretty steady. You're going to get the same intensity of your compound until about 100 volts. So you could use anything from the 0 to 100 volts and be okay. Here is an example of an isobaric interference. When you've tuned four transitions, and the green trace here is actually an isobaric interference instead of a real transition. So eliminate that from your tune file. Right click in the table to add declustering potential to the columns. And in this case the default of 70 is fine, I'm going to leave it as it is. Now we want to save our file, so go to File, Save As, and name it the name of your compound. Now for older mass specs, you may need to tune what's called the collision cell exit potential. You can only do this to one transition at a time, so I'm going to delete a transition, go to Edit Ramp, select Collision Cell Exit Potential, and we're going to go stepwise two and a half volts at a time. Okay, click Acquire and name this MRM CXP Opt 1. And the 1 stands for the first transition in your table. So we get kind of a peak. Go ahead and reopen your compound name file that you just saved without saving this. And now we're going to delete the transition we did just find the CXP for and do the other. So click Edit Ramp, select CXP from the drop down, go two and a half volts at a time, click Acquire, and name this MRM CXP Opt 2. And you'll do this for each of the transitions you have. 
Okay, once you have the CXPs, go ahead and stop the syringe pump, which I forgot to do, and don't save this file because you don't want to lose the other transition. Now you'll go to Explore and open the data file, choose the analyte you just tuned, and now you can look through all of the data you just saved from the Q1 all the way through CXP. You can use the arrows at the top in the toolbar. And this is really good to have as kind of a backup information if you lose your tune files or your acquisition method disappears. You will have a file where you can go back and find your transitions and find your Q1 mass and find the declustering potential. Always make sure you do the clustering potential matches for all transitions. Here we have the CXP of the first transition. You can see the 337.1 to the 188.1, and the second 337.1 to 105. Right, you can go ahead and close out of that. Now go to Acquire, open the file, choose your compound, click OK. Go to MRM, and here you have your acquisition method parameters. Right click to add all of the columns. And here you can make adjustments to uh, the CXP. So the default was fine for the first transition. For the second, we're going to go ahead and change that to 9. I like using whole numbers for the collision energy, the declustering potential, and the CXP. You can also assign priority to your transitions here. Just be sure you save the file, and that's how you do it. I hope you learned something. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching, and tune in for the next video.